Welcome to CFT. What you're about to see is a teaser module of our upcoming RegTech course. If you'd like to know more about regulator technology, if you wish to give us feedback about the content you would like to see, and if you have interest for you as an individual or as an organization to be trained and aware of the RegTech opportunity, please message us at regtech at cft.education. In this module, I will talk to you about the RegTech startup ecosystem. Predicted to be one of the fastest growing sector of 2020, the RegTech startup ecosystem has grown rapidly to match the expectation. Entrepreneurs are driven by the US dollar $100 billion market opportunity that represents compliance spending. This has brought up a market of over 300 startups. Comparatively, the fintech ecosystem is about 7,000. And those 300 startups have been fueled by over US dollar 1 billion of venture capital investments in 2012. To better understand startup ecosystem, let's start at looking at a context. Whilst USA is the biggest market in terms of compliance spending, most of the activity in RIC tech is happening in Europe. Europe and Asia as region represent a large compliance spending market. However, Asia, whilst being the third largest market opportunity, is also very fragmented. The 2008 financial crisis has represented a strong catalyst for regulatory changes across the world. The combination of fines over 321 billion, regulatory changes tripling in the last three years, and post-crisis reform implementations such as Dodd-Frank Act and Basel III have forced banks to increase their operating costs and their compliance costs as an obligation to meet new demand. To give you a sense of scale, a financial institution like JP Morgan has added 14,000 legal and compliance staff since 2012. And it's not unusual for banks to have 20 to 30% of their employees working in compliance related functions, meaning that a tier one universal bank such as HSBC has more compliance officers than Facebook total employees. However, the numbers of recurring fines occurring post crisis is challenging the effectiveness of simply adding human resources to meet compliance obligations. Indeed, for each $1 spent on compliance, three is spent on regulatory fines. It seems that the compliance industry has difficulty to learn from its mistakes. A decade has passed since the crisis, and since then, most of the regulatory changes have been implemented. Financial institutions are now starting to look at how to automate new compliance obligations and decrease the added recurring cost that has built up post-crisis. Rectech startups are answering these demands. Rectech companies can be classified into three categories, each that I will illustrate. First, you have companies on regulatory compliance. For example, startups showing how you can learn about regulatory changes and how it impacts the business logic of a bank. Second, you have risk management startups. For example, they can identify conduct it to prevent another LIBOR scandal. And finally, financial crime startups, where they will understand, for example, the ultimate beneficiary of a company to avoid money laundering. Most of the startup concentration is found in the regulatory compliance space. This reflects the fact that this represents a low-hanging fruit for success. Data availability, limited integration, and lower risk in case of error. Similarly to fintech companies, the majority of regtech companies are B2B providers selling to financial institutions. Whilst the demand for our client base is strong, it appears that the sales cycles remain long, on average 12 months, which is on par to what we see in the fintech industry. Certain exceptions are noted, especially in the context of upcoming regulatory deadlines, such as MIFID II and GDPR, which are fast-tracking the sales cycles of startups. Additionally, regtech startups can be found in two other areas worth mentioning. Firstly, regulators. The B2G space is growing. Regulators globally are engaging regtech startups via various channels, from hackathon to accelerators to finding solutions to enhance their supervisory or regulatory function. Similarly to financial institutions, regulators are driven by the cost benefit provided by regtech startups that can reach a factor of 10. These savings are especially important when considering the fact that taxpayers' money is used to finance regulators and their operating costs, making it a strong public policy case. However, whilst having a regulator as a client brings a lot of legitimacy, the lengthy procurement process is extended by additional tendering rules relative to sourcing suppliers from the public sector. Secondly, certain fintech companies are directly adding regulatory compliance process into their product. 
For example, in the context of wealth management space, fund products are now being sold and marketed only to pre-qualified investors by leveraging on their data to assess suitability, location and investment profile. Whilst for consumer, this provides a level of personalization of services, for financial institution, this embeds regulatory compliance into the sales cycle and avoids fines relative to mis-selling, which previously occurred as compliance and sales function were operating in silos. This is ending our first introductory module about the RegTech ecosystem and the startup operating within it. As mentioned at the beginning, this is a simple teaser of a longer RegTech course that CFT will be developing. If you enjoy this content, or if you would like to know more about RegTech and have a better understanding of how RegTech can benefit you as an individual or as an organization, please let us know. Email us on rectech at cft.education and we'll make sure to include your feedback in our course that is due for 2020.